This series helps new players by taking them step by step through the tough decisions you make early on in the game in order to get the kind of start you need to survive on DD difficulty. If you're new here, subscribe and hit the bell to keep up with the channel. Okay, so one other quick note here is I'm going to be taking a lot of time to go into detail and explain things for new players. So if you're an experienced player and you don't want to deal with that, there if you look at the top of the screen right now, there'll be a link to a normal DD Let's Play that might be more up your alley. Okay, so first off, I want to take a real quick second to thank everybody on Facebook and Reddit who gave me helpful suggestions and hints how to make this better. With that being said, the first thing we're going to do is talk about our leader here and how it's going to impact our play style in this first 50 turns of the game. Now, it's not impossible to win a culture or a science victory with a civ leader who's geared towards helping domination, but it does obviously make your life a lot easier if you pick a civ leader that's geared towards whatever sort of victory you're going to be chasing in the game. So Genghis Khan here gives us the Mongol Horde. All cavalry class units gain plus three combat strength and a chance to capture defeated enemy class cavalry units. So obviously this goes great with domination and if we stay focused on building cavalry units like horsemen, knights, their special unit, the Keshig down here, that's obviously going to help out quite a bit. Now they also have a special ability here, or two, or however the hell you're supposed to pronounce that, but starting a trade route immediately creates a trading post in the destination city. You receive an extra level of diplomatic visibility for possessing a trade route in any city of a civilization. So all Mongolian units double their usual combat bonus for having a higher level of diplomatic visibility than their opponent. So to break this down for newer players, Essentially what it means is if you send a trade route to an enemy civilization You are going to get a combat bonus for having a higher level of diplomatic visibility than them This basically goes for every civilization in the game other than France because uh, France automatically starts with a higher level of di Diplomatic visibility than anybody else in the game. It's one of their special abilities So that covers that pretty much the other thing is they have a special building to Ordu, But we'll get into that kind of once we get get into the game there's not much that needs to be talked about it at this point okay so here we go we've got a basic starting position here now for new players the first thing you want to do when you're starting a new game is you want to put the yield icons on it's going to show you basically what each tile is going to give you and it definitely helps out when you're going to be looking to settle your first city. So you press Y in order to toggle the yield. So here we go. Now this gives us a better idea as to where we're going to want to settle. Now we have some decent yields here. Unfortunately, if we settle here on this tile, we're not going to have a 2-2 uh, because we'll, by settling the city, we'd get rid of the forest and so it would just go to two food and one production like any other normal thing looking around here we do have the marble across the river from us what i'm going to suggest doing here is we're going to move across the river and settle the marble on turn two there's more than one reason behind us doing this now by moving closer to the mountain it's going to allow us to have a better location to build a campus now Although we're playing as Genghis Khan and the Mongols, and we are definitely going to be having a domination-focused victory, their special unit is cavalry, their bonuses all revolve around cavalry, and those are quite a ways down the tech tree here. So if we take a look, we want to get into horseback riding as quickly as we can. That unlocks our special building the Ordu, which is obviously a big thing that we want to work towards. We need to go down here to get bronze working in order to get an encampment. And our special unit is even further down the way in stirrups here. So in order to get through the tech tree as quickly as possible in order to achieve these things, I think it's important for us to go towards writing so we can get a campus district. So with all those things put together, we're obviously going to want to keep that in mind when we're looking to settle our first city. Okay, so that kind of leads us into the next subject we're going to discuss here, which is district planning and city planning. I think for newer players, it's really only important to kind of plan your first district or two. Start with that as a guideline. Once you practice and get more comfortable with that, then you can kind of get more experience and go a little bit more advanced as far as planning stuff goes but recently with gathering storm here we've got the upgraded map tax we don't have to use mods anymore definitely want to get in the habit of using them they're a great help when planning cities and districts by using them 
it's just easy to put it put it on the map and you don't have to worry about forgetting what you had planned so what we're going to do is we're going to drop a map tack here for our city center now our next spot that we're going to go to as we talked about already we want to get a campus going so we're going to plan to put our campus here on the hills next to our city so if you look at the adjacency bonuses here so it's going to be getting plus one science from the adjacent mountain tile there and eventually if we can get one more district beside it because our city counts as a district as well we'll get another science so we're going to go ahead and plan to put our campus here ideally we want to plan to put another district either on this tile or this tile in order to have a district triangle we call it where we will have three districts in a triangle and they all feed off each other and help each other's adjacency bonuses if you can if you can plan for it you definitely want to try and do this with your cities so given the two different tiles here what i'm thinking is that we are going to do we're going to plan to put a commercial hub on this district right here now this is because if you look at the commercial hub they get plus two gold for having an adjacent river tile so you always want to place your commercial hubs along rivers when possible there's two districts planned out. Now, we'll definitely be going for an encampment before we do that. eventually place that commercial hub. It's good for us to put it on the map so we don't forget about it. And having that district triangle is really going to help us out in the long run. Because district adjacencies really add up as you play through the game. Okay, now with all of that out of the way, we're finally going to move our settler. So we'll pop him over to our, our spot on the marble here. Now, one other thing I didn't mention also is another advantage of settling on the marble is that it's automatically going to unlock it as a luxury resource for us be without having to have the prerequisite tech to actually mine it so now if we settle here the first civilization that we come across we're going to trade away that luxury resource at our first chance in order to get some cash from them and use that cash to help us propel our game that much quicker so with our warrior, let's go exploring here. The only thing that I usually think about when I'm exploring with my warrior at first is I take a quick look at the terrain and you can see there's hills over here and forests and whatnot and to the east it looks like it's a little bit more flat. So that's kind of where I'm going to head in the direction of is I want to get as because I want to get as many moves in with the warrior as I can. Okay, so nice, we did find a goodie hut over there. We'll slowly make our way to it, but it takes an entire turn's worth of movement to cross the river, so we might as well go up one more step here and then cross over next turn. So our settler is finally ready to place our city. We're gonna pop that down now. Okay, so we got an extra air score there for settling on the river. There's floodplains nearby, so that's why we got that bonus there. We're going to go ahead and get rid of that map tile now that we have placed our city. But we definitely want to get started here with a scout. Scouts obviously help you explore the map. And in the first age, the ancient era here, you get uh, you get an era score for every goody hut you meet. For every... <laughs> goody hut you meet. You get an error score for every goodie hut you land and explore on. You get an error score for every civilization you meet and for every city state as well. Those are definitely things you want to prioritize and obviously having a scout helps you do that. One thing you can consider if you're feeling a little bit insecure and worried about being attacked is you can build warriors instead of scouts and use them for the same purpose. They just obviously don't get the movement bonuses that the scouts do. So now with what we talked about earlier, what we are going to do is we are going to prioritize going straight for writing first. This is because we want to get that campus down as soon as we possibly can so we can start getting the bonuses to science and start making our way towards our different priorities in the tech tree. Okay, so this guy's going to pop across the river now and next turn we'll grab that goodie hut to see what there there is for us inside. Okay, so we got a plus one population, which is pretty good. Looking over here, there look to be some nice spots for a potential campus in our second city. So we'll explore that more 
with our warrior as as we go by here. We're going to want to place our second city as soon as we can, especially considering we are going domination. When you're playing with domination civ, you want to get your first two to three cities up as quickly as you can, and then switch into a more aggressive play styles. Because of the movement issues here, we're just going to stick on this side of the river for now and explore this way. Nice, so we were lucky enough we found a second continent there and got the boost to foreign trade. Ugh, unfortunately, there looks like there's a desert over here and quite a few volcanoes too. So we are definitely going to be wanting to settle up this way to try and minimize the amount of desert tiles that would impact our city. Okay, so we did finish a scout. And now because of that extra goody hut, we got the boost to a population. So we're going to start in on a settler right away. As I said, you want to get your cities out as quickly as possible possible but that's especially important when you're playing domination victory because you want to start conquering as quickly as you can now our warrior is just going to keep following the mountain range over here looking for a nice place for us to settle our second city we'll look more into that as we go along here because we still have 13 turns to make up our decision so i always try and scout it as much as i possibly can so that i don't end up regretting where i'm going to settle my second city now with our scout here, we definitely want to go in the opposite direction that our warrior has. So we're going to pop across the river here and head to the east. Okay, so there definitely looks like there's some potential for a city over here. Again, we will we'll take a closer look shortly. For now, we're just going to keep exploring. Nothing too interesting our scout scene so far. Now, we finished Code of Laws here. Generally speaking, as far as whether you choose to go craftsmanship into state work first or foreign trade into early empire, it all depends what you're really looking to do with your civilization. Now, with us personally playing as Genghis Khan and the Mongols, we're kind of in a pickle because you want to go towards foreign trade to get the trader up so you can get that increased diplomatic visibility on the enemy AIs we come across. But we also want to go towards military tradition so that we can unlock maneuver here and get the plus 50% production towards ancient and classical era heavy and light cavalry units. Considering we would also like to get a colonization policy card here in early empire, I think since we already got the boost towards foreign trade here, that we're going to choose to go towards early empire first and then eventually make our way towards military tradition. Going for it this way also gives us some extra time to clear a barbarian outpost and hopefully get the boost there, as well as giving us extra time for boosting craftsmanship in a perfect world too. So we have our first choice here for picking our government slots. Now, obviously we don't have too many to choose from. As far as the economic policies here, I personally almost all the time will go with God King because I think getting a Pantheon is definitely a nice boost and you want to get one as quickly as you can so you have the best choices available to you. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and slot in here. The Really the only exception to that for me personally in this day and age is if I'm playing a civilization like the Mali or Indonesia say that have these huge faith bonuses early on then I always go with urban planning because you're basically guaranteed to get a good pantheon anyways. Now as far as the military policy choices here we have discipline where we get plus five combat strength when fighting barbarians which is always good in the early game. You. We also have surveyed that we can choose if we want to where we double experience for recon units. Now. We haven't found any barbs yet, and we do have our scout on the map, so I am tempted to pick survey, but I think because this is geared towards newer players and helping them out, that I'm going to go towards discipline because that's probably the policy card that I would suggest newer players start with automatically, just because it's going to give you a, a it's going to be a big boost to you when you're defending against barbarians. Okay, so we're going to keep exploring with our builder here, or <laughs> with our warrior, I mean. Our scout hasn't found anything recently, oh, except for some barbarians now, and a, and we did find a goody hut, so that's nice. That wasn't a nice sound, <laughs> oh, I guess we have some barb camps spawning next to us, so it is a good, I, it is a good thing that we picked 
the discipline policy card. Now we're in luck because this barbarian camp happens to be exactly six tiles away from our capital, which means if we clear it out, we're going to get three air score for doing so rather than just two. Now, while we are going to make our way over there, fairly quickly with our warrior i'm gonna take another turn or two to scout here and see as much as i oh <laughs> there we go to see as much as i possibly can before uh we decide where we're gonna place our second city so we've met the Khmer here we'll say it's an honor to meet you we'll sample their hospitality a lot of times when i'm playing on dd or even a mortal difficulty i won't want to exchange information on the capitals with with the AI early in the game, and this is because it just makes it that much harder for them to build, uh, amass an army and send it towards you for early aggression. So meeting the civilization definitely helped us out with with our boost towards writing, which is going to help us get our campus online that much earlier, so that's nice. Now, the one unfortunate thing is that they're very close, and this is kind of the area that I was thinking about settling in, so what we are going to do is take the time right now so what we are going to do is take the time right now to have a closer look and decide exactly where we are going to to go so the first thing you're going to want to do is put a settler lens on you can either hit four on your keyboard or just manually do it this tells you where all the fresh water is going to be and as especially as a new player you definitely want to pretty much use it as a rule of thumb to settle fresh water all the time it's just one less thing for you to worry about and I think as a new player that's definitely something that you want to do as much as you can is minimize the things you have to think about because as you know in Civilization 6 there's quite a bit to keep you occupied. So here we go we have quite a bit of fresh water in the area to choose from and what we want to do is settle close to this location right here because it's going to give us the plus two adjacency for the campus because it has the geothermal fissure on it so we're going to take a look at that and we're going to use our map text like we did before so we're going to say that this is an ideal spot for a beautiful campus because we have the plus two from the geothermal fissure here plus one from this mountain and plus one from this mountain as well so as you can see that definitely stacks up really quick as by settling this city in this vicinity and getting that campus on online, we're going to more than double our science output by just building one frickin' campus. We know that we want to build our campus there. That's a good start for us planning this city here. The next thing we want to think about is, as I already mentioned, the district triangles. If you can do it, it's great to get it going as soon as you can. So ideally, we probably want to settle, if we can, in one of these three locations here. Unless there's something that definitely makes it worth our while to not go ahead and do this. So after giving it a little bit more thought, I basically narrowed it down to two different possible city locations that I would personally go with. Now, there is this one right here, settling on the marsh, which is going to help us eventually get a district triangle going, which, as I said, is something you want to keep in mind and do as much as you can. And the other one would be right here, and this is because you'd have access to better tiles at the start, as well as the, the luxury resource, whether that's gypsum or diamonds there, I can't tell. I have already made up my mind here, and I'll tell you the, my logic behind it. While this possible city location has nicer tiles to work with in its immediate vicinity, it's also not as good for, for defending as it, it's very close to the Khmer here who were most likely going to attack first. So it's not that big of a deal except for the fact that we want to get our first city or two up and running before we attack them and we have a long ways to go before we get cavalry and all that other stuff we talked about earlier. So by settling the city down here, it's a better defensive location. Also. There's these volcanoes we talked about earlier too, which are gonna bump up these tiles once they start spraying out. On, on top of all that, there's also more hill tiles, which will help us out with production. As you can see, we, we're gonna have quite a few more available to us to work with and build mines than the location up here. Now, as you can see, I switched it into the strategy view there. You can hit the equal sign on your keyboard to do that. I toggle it just for myself personally. I find it easier to look at and identify where the hills are on on the map. It's just easier for me to do than to count them when I'm like this in the normal view mode. So now 
with everything we already talked about, we're going to get rid of that tile there. This is going to be the location for our second city. So now that we have that figured out, let's plan around it. The first thing we're going to want to do is get an encampment going after our campus, and they need to be settled two tiles away from your city. So what we're going to do is pick this location here for our encampment and the reasoning behind this is it's a great defensive location. We have the river here separating separating us from the Khmer so we'll be able to take shots across the river and they'll have to cross the river to attack us other than this one tile here. Also by putting our encampment there it leaves us a nice juicy spot here that we can pick a commercial hub which will definitely get the plus two bonus from the river. It'll also complete our district triangles that we've talked about. And I think that's definitely something that we're gonna plan to work towards. Now that we have our, our second city mapped out, it takes a load off here and we wanna get that out as soon as possible so the Khmer don't end up settling even closer and ruin the plans that we just figured out. Now that we have figured that stuff out though, we're gonna take our warrior and head down as quickly as we can to get that barb camp out, out of the way. With our scout here, let's take a look and see what the goodie hut has for us. It gives us experience, um, so we'll take the promotion. Now, we take a quick look around here before we decide whether we wanna go for ranger or alpine. So far, it does seem like a fairly even mix between hills and forested tiles. So I think this time we're just going to go with the Alpine because, I mean, at this point, it's more of a roll of the dice anyway. And there seem to be quite a few hills in the immediate vicinity where he the scout's exploring. So now that we got that taken care of, we'll continue on. And so far, it seems like we made the right decision, <laughs> but time will tell, I guess. We're just going to keep going with this scout. We're looking to hopefully end up meeting three city-states as quickly as we can, because we want to get the boost for political philosophy. Um, you definitely always want to beeline towards political philosophy as quickly as you possibly can, because getting that second tier of government is a big edge in the early game. Okay, so we'll cross the river with our scout here. Every nation lives by exchanging. Now we finished foreign trade, so that's a good thing. We're going to get our trader units going in, in the near future here, so we can have that advantage against the Khmer. Now, as we talked about earlier, we're going to head towards early empire because we want to get the boost to, of colonization and get some settlers going. And it's, it's going to take... And that's going to leave us more time to get a builder out to improve some the, the tiles and kill barbarians to hopefully get the boosts we need to those traditions. So I'm a big fan of automate exploration. I usually keep it manual for the first little bit, but once I've gotten to this point, turn 15 or 20, I just put it on automate because it's one less thing for me to worry about. and. It basically does a good job on its own. So our warrior here has finally made it over to the barbarian camp. What I am going to do though is tell him to move on to the forest. And this is in the off, off chance that they end up spawning units. We'll be in a better defensive location. So we're just going to start whacking them down here. It helps that we have the discipline policy card in from before. Now, our settler has finished here, which is great news for us. Now, normally, I would suggest players getting their defensive units up as early as possible. But here's another situation where, because we're playing as the Mongols specifically, and they get that combat bonus from having the extra level of diplomatic visibility, that I'm going to choose to build a trader first before a slinger. What we're also going to do as well is keep in mind... Our, we're going to keep an eye on our gold. Oh, shit. <laughs> Speaking of gold, I just realized that I completely forgot to trade our bonus resource with the Khmer. And we're going to trade... We're going to make a deal with the Khmer here and see what they'll give us for our marble because they won't even give us $100 for it. But they will 
do four gold for 30 turns, which is better than nothing. And seeing as how we haven't met anybody else at this point, we'll take what we can get. Now, the reason I didn't send the Khmer a delegation on the first turn I met them, which you definitely want to do in order to keep good relations with uh, enemy civilizations, is because we are going to be playing domination and everybody's going to freaking hate us anyway. Speak, not to mention that the Khmer themselves are probably going to be our first target for an attack. So I just figured I'd save our, us 25 gold, but I didn't mention it at the time. So I figured better take, get that out of the way now. Normally you definitely always want to escort your settlers, but because our warriors are already in the vicinity that we're traveling and going to be settling up on, we're just going to send them out. Okay, so it sound, that sounds like we found a goodie hut there, and as I mentioned, we're going to start with building a trader first here. I don't see a new goodie hut, I do see another barb camp over there. <laughs> okay, sorry, it's right there, so after we clear the barb camp over here, we'll head down and check out the goodie hut. Okay, so I'm going to take one turn to heal up with our warrior, and then we should be able to clear that camp out. While it might be better to come on this side of the river to be closer to our warrior, I'm just going to risk it and stay on this side of the river, considering we are settling that tile. Now, I think we're okay, because I'm pretty sure the Barbarian Scouts don't attack... Um, don't attack and take over settlers or builders unless their camp has been destroyed. So actually, considering that that is the case, I'm pretty sure, we're going to wait another turn or two here until our settler gets closer to where we're going. Okay, so we did manage to get writing. Now, as soon as you unlock the technology that you're going to be using for a district, you want to place the district down. This is because... Even if you're going to keep working on the trader, it's going to allow you um, to lock the district's production in place. So, like as you can see right now, it takes us 54 production to build this campus. But as you continue to unlock new civics and new technologies, that price for the district goes up and up and up. So you always want to lock in your district price as quickly as you can. So we're going to lock it in for right here. In order to do that though, since we are working on a trader, we gotta pop it up and we'll actually place it down. So now it is locked in, but we're gonna switch back up and build our trader first. But now at least we can get rid of this map tack because the campus has already been placed. Okay, so we've gotten we've gotten writing, which is what we wanted to do in order to propel our science game a little bit, but now we are definitely going to head towards mining and bronze working because we want to get our encampments going next. Not to mention, especially this city here doesn't have the most ideal starting tiles, so we're going to want to build the mines as quickly as possible in order to get in order to get our production up. Not to mention we have another source of marble here that if we end up meeting another civilization, it would be great to be able to trade that off to hopefully get an, more of an early boost from them. Okay, so our settler is safe where we want to build our next city, so we're gonna plot that down right now. We'll get rid of that map tack. And then as we mentioned, you wanna lock down districts as soon as you're possibly able to, so that's what we are gonna do is All right, well, in a perfect world, that's what we'd like to do, but I forgot that we don't actually have the technology needed in order to remove the marsh. Okay, so unfortunately, we're not going to be able to place down our campus right away like we'd like to. So in the meantime, what we're going to do is just start them on a builder because, because as we already talked about, they don't have the greatest tiles to begin with and are going to need to build some mines and stuff to increase their production. So the Khmer here have denounced us, which we don't really give two shits about because we're planning on attacking them anyway. Our warriors have healed up enough, so let's kill that camp, get some air score here, which is great. We've also got the boost towards military tradition for clearing the camp, which is one of the civics that we needed. That's a good thing. It'll help us get the maneuver policy card quicker, and that is definitely helpful. So what we're going to do is swing down to check out that goodie hut quickly, and then we'll want to get our warrior back up towards our 
new city as quickly as possible because we want to prepare for the Khmer to come attack us. Now, with that being said, I've given it a little bit more thought here. And after we pick up mining, instead of going straight into bronze working, which ideally we want to do pretty quickly so we can get our encampments up and running, I'm going to take animal husbandry and pr progress towards archery. We want to be able to defend ourselves from the Khmer until we're ready to attack them later on as we get into horsemen and our special units and whatnot. But that's a ways down the road, so we want to be, be prepared in the meantime. Okay, so they've built their trader and they're getting started on the campus, which is nice. We're gonna send the trader immediately towards our enemy, so this will give us that diplomatic visibility bonus we talked about earlier, not to mention the added incentive of that it's actually gonna build a road to their city, which will help us once we end up starting our war against them in, in the near future. Okay, so we got a boost towards currency, and we finished mining, which is good. That means once we get our builders eventually here, they'll actually be able to do something for us. Okay, so it looks like they just got some extra gold. That reminds me that I completely forgot about buying us some slingers, so we're going to go ahead and do that now. You want to either buy or build yourself at least two or three slingers before you get archery so that... Not only it gives you the chance to get the boost to archery by killing somebody with the slinger, but it also saves you production because it's better to upgrade a slinger into an archer rather than just produce an archer straight up off. So we're going to buy one slinger there and we're going to buy a slinger in the capital as well. Okay, so now that the warrior's done his job there exploring the thing we're gonna send him back towards our city there okay so we happen to meet the Inca here so it's an honor to meet them now as I said because we're playing on Didi I strongly suggest not exchanging information on your capitals unless you happen to know where you bumped into this unit so I have no idea where the Inca are they could be right beside us on the other side and I don't know so I'm just gonna say sorry we can't give that information away right now and now they're probably up here no that's the Inca or wait yeah <laughs> no that's the Incas so there they are so I probably would be okay exchanging information on the capitals but it's I find personally I'd rather not do that in the early game until I have my defenses set up in case they decide that they like my empire and they want to come and attack me. So with that being said though, I am going to send the delegation because our first our first victim is clearly going to be the Chimera because they're by far the closest. So in the meantime, it's nice to keep them as happy as we can. Sending the delegation on the first turn improves your relationship and in a perfect world it's going to help us get a better price for our marble once we get the second tile up and running. Okay, so the Khmer have started building Stonehenge, which is great because it's going to keep them occupied and not building units to come attack us with. Now, with that being said, I'm going to explore with our slingers here. We're going to hopefully run into some barbarian scouts or something that we can knock off with them really easily and get the bonus towards archery. Or get the tech boost towards archery, I should have said. So we have finished our pantheon, which is great. In two turns now, we can switch out of God King and into urban planning in order to get some more production going in our cities. Okay, so taking a look at the pantheons here, I think we're going to be looking for uh, the God of the Forge, which gives us a bonus towards, 25% bonus towards early unit production. And, okay, so unfortunately, God of the Forge is already gone. Uh, we do not have the best of picks. We're going to have to take a closer look around and see if there's anything that will help us. Uh, Divine Spark is always a decent choice. Okay, so after thinking about things a little bit more, I think the obvious choice for us here is to come down and take Goddess of the Harvest. Now, it's this is the most powerful pantheon that's in the game by far. While we're not planning 
anything to do with religion, what we can do is, by taking this Pantheon, it's still going to help us, because we're going to be chopping out units for our army anyways, which is going to give us faith. Now, if we manage to unlock a Golden Age in the next two ages, we can choose the Monumentality Dedication, which allows you to purchase builders and settlers with faith, which goes a long ways which if we have a bunch which will definitely come in handy if we have a bunch of faith stored up from the troughs that we're going to be doing anyway so we're going to go ahead and pick our goddess of the harvest here none of the other ones really helped us i thought about the the uh one that we get an extra production from marshes and stuff like that but we really don't have that many i mean there's the two marshes here and the one up by this city and you know three extra production isn't really anything to write home about especially considering we're going to be clearing out that marsh as soon as we're able to anyway okay so we're going to keep looking around with our sling here it looks like there's an uh, city-state here so <laughs> we're gonna meet our first city-state we want to try and get two more as quickly as we can so we can get that boost to political philosophy we talked about earlier and hopefully unlock our next tier of government a little bit quicker so there we go there's exactly what we want to see is a barbarian scout Ho this must present in the wet hopefully we're gonna be Waterfall able to take them out excellent. as quickly as possible and get that boost towards archery not to mention uh, killing another Barbarian is one step closer towards getting the boost to uh, bronze working so we can get those encampments up and running because you need to kill three Barbarians in order to get the boost to bronze working. So we did manage to find Uluru here. Uluru, I think that's how you pronounce it. Anyway, uh, it's a pretty decent natural wonder which obviously helps us out with air score as well so we secured a normal age which is always nice. I don't think we're going to be able to hit a golden age as we have between 10 and 30 turns left before the era ends and we have literally t still 12 era score to go before that happens. And so the wonder's up here so there's no chance that we're going to be settling it anytime in the near future but with any luck Hopefully the Khmer are nice enough to do that for us, and we'll be able to conquer them later in a perfect world. So somebody finished the Great Bath. Our warrior's still available for promotion, which we knew that. Okay, so we're just going to head forward and meet the city-state here, and it's the Yerevan. Unfortunately, in a perfect world, we'd like a military city-state, but... It is what it is, and we're not the first to meet them, so we don't get anything, but they do want us to do a quest by training a spearman. Unfortunately, that's not really something that we're going to be doing <laughs> anytime soon, because spearmen are pretty much useless. It looks like we're just going to be chasing the barbarian scout here. We're not going to catch up with them, most likely. So I'm essentially just exploring down this way with the slinger. I'm going to make a roundabout way up towards the barb camp up there. So it sounds like another bar camp spawned somewhere close by. Okay, so I can't seem to find the bar camp that spawned, but looking up here at our scout, we might be lucky enough to take <laughs> the spearman out and snipe the, the bar camp from the camera here. I mean, I don't think we're going to do it, but it doesn't hurt to try. Well, there you go. You can be pleasantly surprised. It looks like we just got a little bit more gold for doing that. But we also met another city-state, so that's two that we've met. And we only need one more to get the boost to political philosophy. Now, their quests are construct a campus, which is great because we'll be getting that next turn. So that, in turn, is going to give us an envoy at Hutuza, which will end up giving us an extra two science per turn, I believe. So, I mean, that's like half, again, the science we're producing at the moment. So it's definitely... This early game, the more envoys you can get at different city sites, the better, because the boosts, especially in the early game, re really make a difference for you. Now, we finished our as animal husbandry, so let's go and take a quick look down here. We want to see if there's a lot of horses or anything nearby, because clearly we're going to need them <laughs> as the Mongols. 
Okay, and unfortunately for us, it's looking like we only have two horse tiles nearby. The good news is one of them is within grasp of our city here. We'll probably have to buy the tile. But that's definitely worthwhile to do and get online as soon as possible. So once their builder gets out, that's definitely something we'll do. Now taking a look over here, the Khmer have some warriors nearby. So I think we've explored enough with our slinger. We're going to head back towards our territory in case they decide they want to get aggressive. We want as many units in the area as possible. And another thing, as soon as we get up to 140, we'll buy them another slinger here in that city. So technology-wise, we're going to start off working our way towards archery so that we can upgrade our people as soon as possible. Our civic is done here, so we're going to switch before we forget, we're going to go and switch our governments. We're going to get God King out of there right away. Okay, so we know we want God King out of there. And the two choices we have before us are basically whether we're going to pick urban planning, which gives plus one production in all cities. Definitely a good policy card, especially this early in the game. Or colonization, though, which gives us that 50% production towards settlers. As we already talked about, we want to get our set or we want to get our cities up as early as possible, no matter what in the early game. But especially as when you're playing a domination city, you want your first two to three cities as quickly as you possible, so that you can switch gears even faster into attacking. Now, in order to make this choice easier for us, we want to take a look around here. Do we have another spot that's ideal for a city? As I said, I like to switch into the strategy mode. You can do that. You can toggle that by pressing the equal key on your keyboard. It just helps me see the hills a lot easier. As you can see right here, what I'm talking about. Um, we also want to toggle on the settler vision so that we can see fresh water as well. So with that in mind, nothing over here is really screaming out to me as far as great locations for a city. There's, there's not really many with great production, not to mention the barbarian camps over there. So as we take a look around, again, down here, not much production. Obviously, we can't settle in this area. So if we look right here, there actually are some tiles where we can settle and they have fresh water. So taking a closer look here, we definitely don't want it to settle on the hill and get rid of the, the stone and whatnot. We're gonna put our next city here. Now, this is because as we mentioned, there's already some hills here. Sure, they will be overlapping with our the capital and whatnot, but it's a nice defensive location because in order to attack us, the Khmer are gonna to have to come across the river. We're gonna be getting an encampment up as the first district in this city, and that will definitely make it easier to, to defend the location. So now that we've figured out that, it makes our choice a lot easier. While urban planning here is definitely a nice pickup and it's worthwhile, for us, I think the right choice is to go into colonization quickly. And that's because as soon as we finish, as soon as we finish building our campus here in the capital, we are gonna build one more settler before switching gears into our more domination focused gameplay. So our warriors made it back to our territory. Rather than stay on the forest though, we're gonna move up here so that if the Khmer decide to attack us, they're gonna either have to move into a marsh, which will make them more vulnerable, or attack over the river. In the meantime, we're gonna take our promotion as well. We're gonna go with since we're gonna go with battle battle cry here for the plus seven combat strength versus melee and range units. Tortoise is another great promotion. But seeing as how they don't have a lot of archers at this point, I think Battle of Fry is the right choice for us. Now, as far as where we're going next, we're going to go into craftsmanship. So ideally, in a perfect world, we'd like to build, improve three tiles to get the boost to that, if we can. Now, it is quite a, a ways until that builder is going to be done there. So... So unfortunately, we might... We might end up just hard research and craftsmanship, but I mean, it's not the end of the world, although it's not completely ideal. So we're going to keep exploring with our slinger down here. And... Ooh. So one of those volcanoes is active, which is great for us because we're quite a, way, a ways from it, but it's going gonna, it's gonna, to uh, fertilize some tiles for us, so that, that's a nice thing. 
Now we've got the district online, which is good, but as you saw there before that volcano did erupt and take our attention away, it looks like the barbarians have spawned some troops and they're coming towards us, so it's perfect that we saw this when we did it. it with our exploring slinger but we're definitely going to run our ass backwards here so that we can take a more defensive position now <laughs> and not to mention i guess we're not building <laughs> i guess we're not building a third city after all the good news is is that they chose a good location for their city and it will make it easier for us to take so now that that's happened what we definitely want to do here is pop over into our government policies and it's going to cost 145 gold so it's not realistic that we can switch out of colonization we would have liked to jump into urban planning if we could have but you can't get what you want all the time so unfortunately our our plans unraveled there a bit but that's okay things don't always work out the way you plan for them i'm just happy they did settle on the exact tile that we were planning to so it'll end up being a good city in the long run um but now that obviously does change we don't want to build our settler as that was the only location that was actually really worthwhile that we saw so we're definitely going to get rid of the settler here and we're going to switch into a builder because we want to get chopping stuff as soon as we can. Speaking of which, I overlooked that we got a governor here that we can we can pick. Now, while Victor is great, a great choice for when you're conquering as you get the readout, which uh, helps you defend if they're going to attack us. And eventually we can go into garrison commander, uh, which gives you, you combat strength and it gives other cities loyal. Uh, added loyalty which makes conquering easier i think picking magnus as the first one so that we can get ground baker on and help us chop out an army is the best first choice and now when we're picking a city that we're going to actually deploy him in you want to obviously look and see which city you're going to be doing the most chops in and so just as a quick look here we are going to be chopping in our capital the most to start with and so now that we have that figured out, we'll go ahead and quickly assign Magnus to the capital here. Okay, so as I mentioned, I had been planning on buying the Slinger here in the capital right away so that we had an extra unit to defend against the Khmer in case they attacked us. But the <laughs> barbarian army that's approaching us has changed my mind, so next turn I'll be buying a builder in the capital. So it was great that we managed to snipe that barbarian camp on them up here and, and get the the extra money from it. We'll quickly fortify until healed and then continue exploring with them in a minute or two. So this guy's good to just stay in location and stay on alert. And we'll move our slinger over here. We don't we just want to be ready in case they get aggressive with us. Speaking of aggressive, here comes the barbarian invasion. We're going to keep running our ass away and we're going to head towards the hill here um, in order to get the defensive bonus of being on the hill, but then also they're going to have to attack across the river, which will give us a hand. Um, speaking of getting a hand, you know what? I'm trying to decide right now whether it's better to buy a builder or not builder, whether it's better to buy a, a warrior or a slinger. I think in our case, I don't want to be overrun. It looked like there was quite a bit of an army there. So I'm going to go ahead and buy us a warrior in this case because we had the 160 gold. And although it doesn't really serve us that well in the long run, in the short term, it's going to be a big boost in helping us defend this aggression here. So I think it's definitely a, a decent choice. Of course, as I say that, <laughs> they turn tail and run, uh, but what can you do, right? So we're going to start heading around this way with the warrior. Hopefully we'll use the two units in sync and we can manage to trap at least one of the barbarians so we can get that boost towards bronze working because we want to get working on our encampments as quickly as possible. Okay, so our scout is healed up here. We'll put him back on automated exploration. 
And there's a barbarian scout, so hopefully we can kind of wrangle them into the middle here and we'll use our slinger up here and the warrior down here to do so. With my luck, he's probably just going to turn tail and run down there, but time will tell, I guess. We'll just leave the slinger over there. I shot an arrow into the air. It fell to earth. I knew it. Okay, so we finished the builder in the capital, which is going to be nice for chops. But I think what we're going to do first here is send him up to improve the marble. And that's because it's going to allow us to trade it away to the Inca and hopefully we'll be able to get some more money and possibly another unit ideally a builder over here in order to help both cities do some chops and get the army out um, now as far as technology we just completed archery so that's good but we're definitely going to want to head into bronze working here as quickly as we can Again, it would be nice if we can kill another Barbarian in order to get the boost, but there's no guaranteeing that. With with any luck, though, we'll be able to trap this scout here. I think he will be our third enemy, so cross our fingers, right? Now, as far as what we're going to be working on here in the capital, we're just going to start working on another builder right away. All right. In one turn here we'll be able to switch policies which will be good we can get out of that settler one okay and so here we go we'll be able to move forward one and take a shot with the slinger there and do the same thing with this slinger oops and then we'll should be able to kill him oh we never mind we did we we killed him with a slinger so that's so that's good, it unlocked the boost there for us for bronze working, which shaves some time off, and it'll allow us to get our encampments up and running even faster, which is great. And now we can that leaves us free to head over this way with our warrior. Okay, nice, we got our craftsmanship. So before we forget, we're definitely going to come, out of, come over here into our government. We're going to switch out of the policy slot that helps us with settlers, which we're not building anymore. But what we are going to do is go into Ilkum, I think. The 30% production towards builders is going to help out because we want to get builders out so we can do some chops and get our army out quicker. Um, but, af but after we manage to get a couple of builders, we're going to switch into urban planning finally <laughs> and it will probably leave it there for a while now as far as the military policies go here while we have been fighting a few barbarians it looks like that invading army kind of chickened out and headed the other way so discipline isn't really doing us any it isn't really doing us that much of a favor right now and we just unlocked a, a goge or a goge or however you pronounce it um, which is going to give us a production boost towards melee and, and range units so we're going to be wanting to build some archers because because with the changes in gathering storm you can't go completely crazy whether it's like upgrading into knights or upgrading into horsemen you don't get the discounts to upgrading units until you get all the way up in the civics tree to mercenaries here um, and so with that being the case, we won't be able to focus on making as many units that require strategic resources. So archers are the ideal, ideal balance for that. It allows you to defend yourself easy and they're also useful for killing units. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to switch into that and replace the discipline policy there. And like I said, we want to get rid of colonization and we'll choose Ilkum. So that'll be good for now. So now that craftsmanship is finished, we're going to head towards military tradition because we want to get our maneuver policy out, which will help us build cavalry, whether it's horsemen, which we definitely want to do, or even building the war chariots in order to, um, because you pre-build war chariots so you can upgrade them to knights once you get stirrups. We're going to go ahead and choose military tradition right now. Normally, unless if you weren't playing a domination victory, you want to beeline it for political philosophy as soon as you can. Um, getting the extra governor title here from state workforce, plus being able to build the government plaza are all nice things, as well as getting into that advanced government 
that I had already talked about earlier. But like I said, in this situation, we're going to take a military tradition first, and then we're going to be headed for political philosophy right after. I just think the boost of production and then also the combat bonus that you get from flanking and uh, support combat, getting that unlocked as well will be helpful, especially if the Khmer here decide to get aggressive on us. Apparently, they don't look like it right now. They're just sending their religion our way, which we really could give two shits about, so we'll take it. Now that we have dealt with that barbarian scout, we're going to send our slinger back up. That way, we're going to... This guy's going to come in, and we're going to upgrade him to an archer. With our warrior, we're going to keep looking. This builder is going to help us get that marble unlocked. So we'll get that quarry up and running. But now before I forget, we're going to talk to the Inca as well. And we're going to make a deal with them. And in a perfect world, we're going to get 129 gold. Not to mention, let's see how much gold per turn they'll give us. Three? Nope. Two? One. There you go. So it's better to take the gold up front because we're going to be using it right away, but they will still give us one gold per turn for 30 turns, so we'll definitely take that. It would have been nicer to get more than 129 gold, but something is better than nothing, and just selling off your luxury resources earlier, early in the game helps just propel you that much faster towards what you want to do, whatever dif diplomatic victory type you're going for. So now we have Magnus set up in the capital, so we'll definitely be wanting to do some chops here in order to get our units out as quickly as we can. We're just a couple turns away from bronze working here, which will be nice. We'll be able to get our encampment going, and that then we can start getting a little bit more aggressive and start planning our attack on our unsuspecting neighbors. Okay, so the archer's going to head around this side of the mountain, and like I said, hopefully we're going to wrangle up some barbarians there. It's At this point, we've already got the boost for bronze working and unlocked military traditions boost as well, so we're just looking to farm some experience easily if we can. Now, when you're thinking about chopping, definitely something you want to keep in mind when you're thinking about chopping a forest anyway is in a perfect world you want to leave first you want to leave the forests next to rivers because they get a production bonus when you build lumber mills on them you can chop them but i'd suggest especially as a beginning player until you learn more stuff about the game is to save them until last at the very least so we're going to send this builder over here And we finished a builder in our second city here, which is great. Unfortunately, it looks like it's going to take them quite a bit in order to get to population four, which they need in order to build a second district. But I guess that's okay in one regard because it'll give us a little bit of extra time to get our encampment and other stuff up online here. Now what I am going to go ahead and do is I'm going to purchase this tile here because I don't want to wait the 20 30 turns it requires for the border growth especially with the Khmer here I don't want them to nab it on us and I know I eventually it would become ours as we conquer the Khmer but I'd rather have it there in the meantime or just have peace of mind in the meantime we're also going to buy this tile here because that's where we're going to want to get our encampment up next Okay, and so now that they have a builder out, that's nice. We're going to start working on an archer and put a couple of turns of production into it because we still have two turns to wait until we can start building our encampment. In the meantime, what we're going to do is tell this builder to head over here because what we're going to do is buy that stone tile and we're going to end up harvesting it once we have the money to buy the tile in a turn or two. Okay, so here we go. Here... The archer's going to head over this way. We did end up bumping into the barbarians, which is nice. Now, what I'm going to do is head over this way and 
hopefully get them to come towards us here and then we'll use both of our units to attack them. Now this slinger here can be turned into an archer but I think purchasing that tile is more important. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. We've crossed the 60 gold threshold so we'll take care of that. And we're still one turns away from bronze working though. So we're definitely going to wait that turn and sink that production boost from harvesting a stone into our encampment to get it up online quicker. While it would be nice to upgrade that slinger, our next set of 50 gold or 60 gold, whatever it is, yeah, 60 is going to be uh, used in this city here because you have to build your encampment two spaces away and we still don't have the technology required to harvest our marshes because it's irrigation and we weren't lucky enough to spawn around anything <laughs> any resources we could farm that would give us the boost to help out in that regard anyway now that the barbarians are here we're going to take a shot at them with the archer which unlock the promotion and that's nice and then we're going to finish them off with our warrior okay in the capital we finished the builder here and we're just going to start putting a turn of production into the archer okay so we'll just leave the slinger fortified there for now he's not really doesn't really have to do anything for us we do have magnus installed here so that is good but I, I'm gonna wait until next turn to do the chop it will obviously help us get the archer out but I want to be able to springboard any other production into our encampment which we are gonna to have to try and work out a deal with them next turn because we need to get up as quickly as we can towards the 60 gold so with this builder we'll head over to the stone so we're ready there and again, we're going to keep this guy waiting until next turn. Okay, and there's an extra... There's another Barbarian encampment that spawned over there, so that's good to know. Now that we're into the next era, we can definitely head over there. That's going to get us six extra... Er or six, that's going to get us three extra era score because it's within six tiles of our city. And... Uh, now that air score will actually be useful because it'll be working towards uh, an attainable golden era for us. So with that being said, we get to choose a dedication for the next era. Now I always, always, always suggest picking free inquiry as your dedication. I find it's just a lot easier in order, uh, it's a lot easier to get the early game Eurekas than it is to get the early game, um, inspirations in the civic tree so i would highly suggest picking free inquiry it's gonna most likely allow you to get as much air score as quickly as possible okay so now that we have bronze working taken care of we've kind of been all over the place here and to continue in that tradition what we're gonna do is quickly take irrigation it's only gonna take two turns and that will allow us to finally get rid of that marsh there and build a campus in our second city, which is definitely something we want to do. But then right after that, we're going to go straight up to horseback riding because we want to start getting cavalry units up and running. Not to mention unlocking the Ordu, our special building for the Mongols that replaces the stables and is definitely something that we want to go after as soon as possible, as you can see here with uh, grants an ability that gives plus one movement to heavily and light cavalry trained in the city, plus 25% combat experience for all cavalry class units trained in the city, and strategic resources stockpiles increased by plus 10, which, I mean, that just happens. If Even if it was a stable, it would get that, but that is definitely where we want to be going next. Okay, so now... <laughs> we need to do some haggling here as we only have 15 gold and we need 60 gold to unlock that tile and get our encampment down which we want to do as quickly as possible so seeing as how the Khmer don't like us we're going to start with the Inca and see what exactly what it'll take for them to help us out now <laughs> it looks like we're lucky here because they have 46 gold so let's see if they'll make a deal for us ideally we're going to hopefully get rid give them some gold per turn for it because we have a high gold per turn since we still have that deal in place 
for our marble with the Khmer. And apparently they won't make the deal. But they're just not creative enough. So they will do it. Let's see how much, how little we can get away with giving them. So clearly they won't take four, or they won't take three, but they will take four because four ends up being 60. So they're making a profit and they'll accept it in the long run. But this is exactly what we'll need because as I said, we had that nice gold per turn, but we want to get, we want to buy this tile here. Oh, now it's 65. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I totally forgot that when you go into the next age, it actually increases the cost to buy tiles. So what we are going to have to do is go hit them up again and make a deal. Oh wait, they don't have any more money. So now we'll have to go to the Khmer and <laughs> we're going to have to make a deal with them. And let's make a deal for say 30 gold why not and we'll give them two gold per turn oh are you kidding they hate us that much that they won't do it <laughs> well never mind i guess i guess we're shit out of luck in that regard we're gonna have to wait till next turn i guess when we will have the extra four gold we need to buy the tile so these builders can just hang out and skip their turns. We'll start doing the chops next turn. Over here though, we're definitely gonna start their encampment as soon as we can. So we'll place that down here right away. And now we're gonna harvest the stone over here. And apparently, we also need masonry for that, which I completely forgot about. So let's take a quick look here. And masonry takes one turn, so we'll get masonry, then irrigation, and then finally go towards our horseback riding. We're lucky for us; these older technologies don't take us that that long, so it won't be that big of a deal. So we'll just get our builder here to skip a turn as well. Now the archer here got his promotion so we'll take volley uh they're not going to be used to to defend and so garrison isn't really a good promotion for us at this point but we will shift our warrior over so that we can start moving forward with both units and keep them close together Okay, so it looks like we just bumped into another civil or another city state here. Perfect. We met Antioch, so that is the third city state we met, which did give us the burst boost towards political philosophy, and that'll help us unlock. Ooh, <laughs> that'll help us unlock the next tier of government quicker, which is great for us. And they just spawned a barbarian camp right close to us, so we are definitely going to head straight over that way with our units here. Now, I think taking the extra turn to take a shot with the archer for some more experience and clear them with the barbarian, or clear them with the warrior rather, is worth taking that extra turn to do. So we'll just go ahead and do that. Now that we've started building the encampment there, we'll move our warrior that much closer. We finally do have our money. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and buy the tile that we wanted to put our encampment down on and go ahead and do that. So now that the encampment's placed, we still do have that production bonus towards archers. So I'm gonna leave the archer in place here and we're gonna go ahead and chop the forest. We have Magnus there, so it gives us an extra boost. We still have nine turns to go on the encampment as of right now, but since we've got masonry, we can harvest the stone. So we'll go ahead and do that. And that took us down to one turn, which is nice. Okay, and so we're gonna go ahead and harvest the stone in this city. Even though we don't have Magnus in this Magnus setup, I think it's okay to go ahead and do this. We wanna get our army up and running as soon as possible. Okay, and having that production bonus is definitely nice it helped us out there we're still quite a few turns away from the encampment but we got a couple more chops that should help with that 
Now, in the meantime, <laughs> perfect. We're going to use our archer to take a shot at that scout there. Get some more experience for them. Speaking of, of that, we're going to start heading over with this archer to get closer to this barbarian camp here. Okay, so the slinger approached and attacked our warrior. We're going to just flee the scene, basically. We're not really too worried about it. We're going to head over with the ar other, other archer here towards towards that encampment. The good news is we finished our encampment here because of our shops right away. And we're definitely not building a barracks because we want to get that stable, our unique stable improvement. Not only will it give us the four air score, but it's very helpful as we had already talked about there. Okay, and so now in the meantime, um, rather than just keep punch out, punching out archers, I think we're going to quickly take some time to build the granary while until we can build that stable, just because it'll help our population grow a little bit here in the capital, which will allow us to actually start using some of these mines we're going to build and increase the production for our cavalry units, which are going to be the core of us, of our invading force when we attack the Khmer here. So this guy's just going to chill out there. I guess we can get rid of the map tack of the encampment since we've already laid it down. Now, it looks like Yerevan already cleared out that barbarian camp over there, so we don't have to worry about it. But we'll send our archer over this way to just take a quick look to see if there's any more units that we can take pot shots at to get some experience. Now, it's still going to be four turns before we get irrigation and can clear that marsh out so what we'll do is head over this way and we'll chop this forest here now i know i did say that you want to avoid chopping forests along rivers but we want to get our, our war going as quickly as possible so i think in this situation it's worth uh being the exception to the rule kind of thing okay so we harvested that stone that's all well and good. I think what we're going to do now is make our way with this builder over here to do the chop, and we'll send this one here to build a mine next turn. Just start taking shots with our archer here. Okay, so again, like I said, Yervan cleared them out, but it, it does look like there's no more straggling barbarian units, so we'll start heading back towards our territory with that archer this guy here is going to this guy here is going to chop another forest and we're going to throw that production into a builder since we finished the granary unfortunately we only have two turns until we're going to be changing our policies and we're going to be getting out of ilkum i was hoping to get another builder out before then but it doesn't look like we're going to be that lucky. We can try building the mine here and putting a production focus on in the city. I don't think that's going to do the trick, but it's really all we can try at that point. So now that the trade route has finished, what we're going to do is actually transfer it to our second city so that we can build a road from this city towards them to make our attack easier once we actually get it started. Okay, so we're going to continue to make our way towards the Barbarian Camp with the Archers. We should be able to finish them fairly quickly here, so we might end up pivoting this Archer here down towards this way to help with those other Barbarians that we saw earlier. I'm sure they're kicking around there, somewhere there too. Okay, so we'll head across the river for safety and heal up with the warrior here. If you're new here, subscribe and hit the bell to keep up with the channel. Okay, so we hit turn 50 out of 50, which is gonna be bringing this to an end. But in the meantime, in the meantime, what we can do is take a look around here and have a quick recap. So we'll go over the, the concepts basically that we've touched on. We talked a lot about district and city planning, and I think we covered those very thoroughly, at least for the basics to, that you want to establish for yourself to build on. Now, 
specifically as far as domination victories go, we talked about getting your first two or three cities up as quickly as you possibly can so that you can springboard with them and switch into a more aggressive stance. Uh, so because we are playing as the Mongols specifically and our aggression is going to be cavalry based, that's why we went ahead and got the the campus districts first or the technology for them so that we can help propel ourselves down the tech tree and get where we need to go quicker and we can be aggressive as soon as possible. Now chopping is definitely something that you want to take advantage of when you're playing in domination victories in the early game and so Magnus is a very good governor to get early on in order to help that it go that much quicker for you and yeah that's pretty much it so i just wanted to say thanks for watching the video if this did help you at all please leave a like on it video it, it helps our channel quite a bit in getting discovered and we need all the help we can get because we are a small channel but yeah that's it thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video